Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Paul, the Canadian Snowman, here once again with some more geography now. And we got Denmark. You're up. Denmark, we got a store for me. I can't wait. Uh, I know we're going to know some awesome, cool facts and maybe some not awesome, cool facts, but pretty sure awesome, cool facts, right? Is that what you guys got in store for me? Because I don't know. I have no idea what you're about to throw at me, but I'm expecting good things, Denmark. All right. So, I guess let's get in the video. And before you do, please hit that like and subscribe, guys. Please and thank you. You guys are awesome at that. So, I really have appreciated that. Uh, let's get into it. The awesome country of Denmark. All right. Dun -dun. If my computer allows me. There we go. Remember in the Angola episode, I mentioned how I went to Denmark one time and bought a sandwich that was $21? Well, this was that sandwich, oh, yeah. and my reaction was like, $21? Oh, this better be the best sandwich I've ever had in my <laughs> life. You got lucky. <laughs> I remember it's that. Time to learn geography. Now! Hey, everybody, I'm your host, Barbie. Legos, Vikings, and Roll Roll Mathol. We got a lot to cover, so let's jump in. <laughs> Ah, Denmark, the link between the rest of Europe and Scandinavia. So much to discuss. Denmark is classified as a Nordic country, hence located in the Northern European region, oh, even though it's kind God. of like the southernmost state in the Nordics. Full disclaimer, ignore Wikipedia. I'm going to pronounce the location names in their proper Danish context. So here we go. Denmark is made of the Juland, not Jutland, peninsula that connects to Germany in the south, as well as 1,419 islands. Of those, wow. only 443 are named and 74 are inhabited. With the largest island being Shelland, not Zealand, which is not too be confused with Dutch Zeeland, which is not to be confused with New Zealand, although they did get their name- I can't take it! That's too much information! It is connected to Finn Island, not Finn Island, by the Great Belt Bridge completed in 1998. Cool. The country is divided into five regions, the capital being Copenhagen, located on Schellen. Copenhagen is home to a myriad of historical sites, palaces, statues, residential units that are all the same height and style, with pockets of colorful, quaint, cozy shops and cafes, and dangerous bicycle lanes that you are not supposed to Walk on. Now this is where things are really? going to get a little spiced up. And by spiced up, I mean freezing cold and covered in whale blubber. Denmark, for oh. those of you who didn't know, is a kingdom, one of the last surviving ones in Europe, and is currently under the headship of chain-smoking Queen Margaret II. These still fall under Danish sovereignty and make up... I think there was, there was a movie, I think it was a chick flick movie, and I think it had to do with, like, the Prince of Denmark or something like that. Is that true? Am, am I right on this or we got the wrong country here? I, I apologize if I do. But I think they said Denmark, like, he went to to America for some kind of experiment or something. I don't really remember. Fell in love, went back to Denmark. She followed him to Denmark. Anyways, this has nothing to do with this video, so let's get back to it. <laughs> under the headship of chain-smoking Queen Margaret II. These still fall under Danish sovereignty and make up the massive Greenland Island and the Little Faroe Islands. Both of these places are radically different from mainland Denmark. For one, Greenland is primarily inhabited by native Inuit tribal peoples that live on the island and is 80% covered in ice year-round. The Faroe Islands are a conglomeration of 20-ish mystical cloudy windy wow. islands that have this crazy looking lake that looks like it's about to spill over the cliffs into the ocean. These two areas have their own self-governing home rule, otherwise only depending on Denmark for military just that is so cool I want to just go there man those formations freaking amazing that is so cool man Ocean. These two areas have their own self-governing home rule, otherwise only depending on Denmark for military, justice, currency, and foreign affairs. Otherwise, I mean, that's pretty much it. I mean, historically, they did try to kind of create an empire by colonizing parts of the Caribbean, Ghana, India, and then in the Nicobar Islands and the Indian Ocean, but they kind of ran out of money and ended up selling everything to other countries. Too bad. It would be awesome to see people in the Indian Ocean speaking Danish. Nonetheless, mainland Denmark is kind of like a fast-moving economic machine. Let's talk about how. Okay. Now, when it comes to land makeup, Denmark is pretty flat. I mean, the highest point, Mullehoy, is only about 170 meters tall, and it looks like this. Otherwise, only about 13% of the country is forested, including the tree plantations, and the rest is pretty much used for agriculture that can produce enough food to feed about 15 million people. It's about three times the size of their entire population. Good for oh. you, Denmark. But one thing Denmark is actually famous for growing is non-produce plants, like grass, fodder, and Christmas trees. The highly sought-after oh. Danish Nordman fir has been classified as the Rolls-Royce of Christmas trees, and every year, investors from Germany, the Netherlands, 
Netherlands and even the UK jump in at the end of November and grab whatever they can before it's gone. Now, one thing you need to know is that like many other areas in the Nordic region, Denmark's weather can be quite dreary. First of all, Denmark is the only Nordic country that doesn't really get a lot of snow. Denmark is kind of like the mud pit located below the jet stream <laughs> blocked by Norway and the UK. This means that even though it gets really cold, pressure systems rarely cause snow. This is also pretty much why everybody dresses like a J. Crew fall fashion line model on the streets. If you're gonna get wet and freezing, you may as well look good while doing it. Otherwise, yeah, I mean, pretty much the rest of Denmark is just rolling green plains with sandy beaches and quirky little islands that people like to hop over for camping trips in the summer. If we were gonna talk about cool. Greenland and the Faroe Islands, we would get a radically different story of mind-boggling, captivating cliffs, bluffs, sea stacks, glaciers, fissures, icebergs, and mountains. If you don't know what a Mulan is, it's not this, but this. This Mulan is large enough to swallow a school bus. But we'll have to save that for another video that'll come out in 9,374 years. In the meantime, let's talk about the people. <laughs> Right. Now this is gonna get really fun. Denmark's people are really unique in their cultural, historical, and postmodern upbringing. First of all, the country has about 5.7 million people and is one of the highest taxed countries in the world. About 89% of the country identifies as ethnically Danish, about 11% are others. Some of the largest groups in the mm. other category being the Polish, Germans, Turkish, Romanians, Iraqis, and Afghans. Now when it comes to Danish culture, there's a lot behind it, but in a nutshell, Vikings. Vikings pretty much had their start in what is now present-day Denmark and whom pretty much dominated all of the Nordic regions as far as New Finland in Canada to Estonia. Which is why most of the Nordic states and regions can pretty much understand each other when they talk. Danes, Swedes, Norwegians, and Icelanders can Definitely check out the show Vikings. It's awesome. I just finished it. Amazing. One of my best favorite shows of all time. Check out Vikings. I'm sure you guys have probably already seen it, but I'm saying it anyway. Anyways. States and regions can pretty much understand each other when they talk. Danes, Swedes, Norwegians, and Icelanders can generally understand each other as they have the same basic linguistic structure. Sure, there are subtle discrepancies, but overall they can kind of get by conversationally. <laughs> Granted, there's a saying, the Norwegian and Swedish languages sound like dancing fairies, whereas the Danish language sounds like a dude with a potato in his mouth. By the way, anybody who wants to learn Danish, full disclosure, it's gonna suck. The J makes the Y sound, the Y makes the U sound, the V makes a W sound, the R makes a R sound, the H is silent half the time, a ton of the letters are never even used, and don't even get started on A, U, and O. I kind of discovered a little trick though when I went to Denmark. When speaking Danish, all you really have to do is kind of like pronounce the first part of the word that you think makes a sound and then just kind of like give up on the rest of the word. For example, Copenhagen, <laughs> I'm literally just listing names of places in Copenhagen that I've been to. Honestly though, you really won't have much of a problem getting around if you speak English. Over 80% of the entire country, mostly the younger generation, speaks proficient English to the point where they don't even need subtitles when watching American TV shows and movies. Also, keep in mind, Greenland has its own language that is completely unintelligible as it's an Inuit language closer to the indigenous Inuktitut and Yupi languages found in Canada and Alaska, and Faroese is pretty hard for most Danish people to grasp as it actually has more words rooted in the ancient Norse language and it's actually more intelligible to Icelandic. Back to culture though, Denmark has definitely left its mark, whether it's notable figures like author Hans Christian Andersen, philosopher Søren Kierkegaard, or whether- Can you pronounce his name? That's actually how you pronounce his name. Wow. It's not Søren Kierkegaard. It's or whether it be the invention of the loudspeaker, or Legos, or their love of handball, their impeccable architecture, love of cuisine. <laughs> Noma in Copenhagen, by the way, being voted the best restaurant in the world with plates that feature live ants and moss. If you're really gonna get a feel for Danish culture though, you kinda have to know about Janteloten and Hygge. The funny thing is, Danes are kinda brought up in a social mindset that is kinda integrated into their subconscious known as Janteloten, which kinda translates to something like, you are not better than the crowd, which I know sounds kinda depressing, but it's really trying to instill a sense of equality and communal cooperation. Cool. Hygge translates to something like spend good times with friends and family and it's like a cozy thing. Of course, Denmark is known for being ranked one of the happiest overall countries even though they are also kind of one of the highest ranked consumers of antidepressants as well. But hey, they yeah. still pull off everyday life looking oh so good even if it's during one of those really loud annual emergency drills. Okay, Christine, explain what's happening right now. Denmark is testing the sirens for <laughs> our, uh, warfare. We're being attacked by the Germans again. <laughs> I'm scared. I'm really, really scared right now. Yeah, is that the thing? security basement. <laughs> the Germans are coming. Speaking of Germans. Oh my God. 
Now, we all know that one person we're all kind of jealous of because they're kind of rich, well-adjusted, and have a ton of friends, and they're like kind of good-looking. Well, that's Norway. Denmark is a little bit rockier. No, but seriously, for such a small oh, nation, shit. Denmark has a huge entourage of friends, and it's almost kind of hard for anyone in the world to dismiss them at a party. As a founding member of the EU and NATO, Denmark has had roots planted in diplomacy for decades. First off, Denmark generally gets along with Germany. Business between the Germans is a hugely integral part of their economy, and Denmark acts like the gateway to scale. Scandinavia for them and the rest of Europe. The US and the UK are incredibly close as both tangible and cultural imports have been established for centuries. For a while, the Danes even took over parts of the UK, which is why to this day the English language still retains hundreds of Old Norse derived words like leg, dog, and window. The closest friends, huh. though, would have to be the Nordic countries Finland, Sweden, Norway, and Iceland. These four are without a doubt Denmark's closest friends, even though Sweden and them have kind of had more wars and battles historically than any other two states in the world. They've moved on and grown up. Out of the Nordic countries, though, Norway would probably be considered their best friends. Danes are obsessed with Norwegians Aww. and often consider Norway the girlfriend they took away from Sweden. In conclusion, Denmark is the rich, rainy rascal that always seems to show up on time for every party, but somehow gets all his work done in an organized, efficient manner. Stay tuned, Djibouti is coming up next. So Denmark, just, it's just that you're just focused and you just got basically I don't know, it was like perfect, right? Not perfect, but like I said, like you just got it going on. There's really not much drama there. You just, everything's cool and happy, it seems like, except for I guess the antidepressants. And it just seems like it's all around, like great place to live. So shout out to Denmark. I heard, I think it was the Canadian video where there was some kind of, I don't know, dispute with Canada over like a small island or something like this near Greenland or something. If I remember correctly, I could be wrong about this too because my memory sucks. But anyways, awesome guys. You guys are awesome. Uh, thank you, Denmark. Uh, yeah, Vikings are cool. I think it's the coolest thing ever. So that's definitely like one of the things you have up on like every other country, I guess, is Vikings. But I guess that's until I get to some, some of the other countries that had Vikings as well. All right. I guess we'll find out. But anyways, for now, you guys are awesome. Vikings, I mean, like those dang cool islands and that some architecture, awesome stuff. Uh, I appreciate you guys watching. Please hit that like and subscribe, guys, if you haven't yet. And I'll definitely catch you guys in future videos. A lot of fun once again. And peace.